demonstrating here, this is an ACES 2 seat for an F-16. And as I pull a lot of Gs, you'll see the seat push down, which, and my straps are getting loose. I can, you see as I'm pulling Gs, I can really pull my straps up. And if I do negative Gs, it, it really pushes me up into the seat a lot, and my straps get a lot tighter. There is some yaw motion that happens if I'm kicking my rudder pedals over. You won't be able to see it, but the backrest is actually moving inside, side to side to give me a feel that I'm no longer centered in the seat and being pushed side to side by G-force. And if I get into a stall here, which is a particularly good example, the seat, I'm going to do a nasty stall. The seat starts to do the buffeting that the airplane would do, and the more severe the stall is, the worse the buffeting is. I catch the airplane, I stalled it for real. That's the, the general concept of the seat itself, is just to give that direct tactile feel. And the purpose of that is to give muscle memory indication to the pilot that's training. There's a, a lot of issues with training of pilots where they practice maneuvers at high G, assuming that they will be able to pull off those maneuvers in real life. And it's not that they physically can't, but it may not be ideal to pull nine Gs all the time. So this gives you a quick and direct way of knowing that, hey, this is, this is where my real world limits are when I'm doing this. There is a little bit of additional functionality. Uh, there's in the back, not only does it move side to side, but there's also pressure points that push on your back and pull away from your back to simulate acceleration. And if you, you happen to be going in a, in a nose down attitude, you may not be accelerating, but you're gonna have the tendency to want to wanna lean forward in the seat because gravity's pulling you forward. So the pressure in your back is relieved to prevent that from happening. What we're demonstrating the seat with today is actually an off the shelf software, which you can buy at any electronics computer store. And the reason why we're using something inexpensive and, and lower fidelity is to uh, basically proof that our interface software will work with whatever it is that you've got. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate a rather severe stall. So I'm gonna do, pull some Gs to get up into the air here because I was close to the ground. I've got the throttle pulled back. I'm at a floating point now. I'm just about to stall. It's about to kick in here. Okay, so right here is the stall buffet. I'm, uh, I'm not going terribly slow, but it's in a bad attitude. So the purpose of this right here is um, you, you start to get a little bit of buffeting on an airplane before you actually enter the stall and before the stall warning really triggers in most cases. So what, what the seat is doing to me right now is indicating to me that, hey, warning, 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 in real life the airplane would actually be starting to shake. And the more I get into the stall, the more violent the shake's gonna get. And the frequency really depends on a whole number of factors. Right now, I'm in, kind of in a gentle sinking stall, and the, air, the airplane is, yeah, the airplane is not real happy with what I'm doing right now, as as you can probably tell by my voice and the fact that I'm getting shook around in the seat pretty good. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. Okay, what I'm gonna demonstrate here is uh, the kind of effects that you would get as you take off in a real airplane to give those same kind of cues to a pilot. So I'm gently taxing down this not so smooth runway. You may notice that the seat's gently going up and down. As I put it into full afterburner, what you won't be able to see is pressure points in the back of the seat pushing really firmly against me, giving the same kind of indication. Now you can see I'm kind of bumping down the runway and the airplane's going up and down as the runway is not very level and <laughs> pretty bumpy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give a good hard pull up here. My gear up. A little bit of a bump as uh, the gear closes up on me here. So that's the takeoff demonstration. And what you may not have been able to see is as my wheels actually left the ground, there's a vibration that actually ceases. And it, it, although we don't simulate left to right, the same way that 3D audio works with two speakers or a simple headphone, pair of headphones to produce positional audio, you can do the same thing with servos. And that's, that's what we're doing here. So now I'm gonna turn the airplane on its side and pull a lot of G's here and get back around to the airport. And I'm probably gonna stall the airplane on the way because this is a lot of force. Whoa! <laughs> I see the visuals are set up to uh, gray out and black out. 
Yes, as, a, as another cue, they, they often do that with simulators uh, to give a, another direct indication. Plus, it's, it's not fair if you can train beyond reality. So uh, if, you're, if you're flying a simulator in real life and you start doing things that would cause you to lose the ability to say, see, usually the visualizations kick out on you so that you can't see. All right, so the, one of the neat things about the seat is, although that it's, it's very active and it moves a lot, when it doesn't need to cue you, it actually returns you to what they call design eye. There's a specific point for every pilot, and this is the reason why the seats adjust the way they do in a real airplane, uh, where the pilot's eyes not only match the angle of attack for a particular airplane, but line you up specifically with the instrumentation that's in the airplane. So it's, it's really important that that design eye is actually correct at all times. And as I pull G, I'm, the seat's going to drop down, the pressure points are going to go up, up against me and same thing with when I do negative G it, it stands me up in the seat because that design eye changes in real life as you're flying the airplane and you're getting pulled around it's going to move you around so Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology, and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. So what I'm going to demonstrate now is as I come back around, I'm going to uh, shoot an approach to land, and hopefully I'll actually land and not crash, and you'll get to see me kind of get bumped around as I come into land. And, so I'm going to do a high G maneuver as I do an Immelman and turn myself around and come back around to land on this uh, runway behind me. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drop my landing gear here. The air seat kind of drew me down a little bit as the wheels come into the airstream and kind of change the dynamics of flight a little bit. Okay, I'm on final approach about a half mile out. I'm going to have to do a gentle turn in here. I didn't quite line myself up like I should have. All right, so I'm going to re meet the runway here in about 10 seconds. Well, test pilot Matthew is obviously a lot more familiar with the F-16 uh, even in sim mode than I am at this point. It's been years since I had a chance to play with the electric jet to any uh, real uh, <laughs> to any real extent. Although, boy, were those the days! Uh, I got to tell you, the physical cueing from the seat really adds something to the the flight simulation environment that I've not really seen much. We've seen physical, or excuse me, motion cueing in seats on a limited basis. We've never seen it work as well as it does right here, and I got to tell you. From a standpoint of running around in the electric jet, as real as it's going to be for me at this stage of the game in my life, it's about as cool as it gets. It's incredibly accurate. And talk about adding that seat of the pants feel back to the mix. For the Aero News Network and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. And by the way, I'm doing 600 knots. <laughs>